Hey, I'm Scott Stanfield with Vertigo, and I'm going to talk to you about customizing your link data source with code. In part five, the one, the video right before part six, this one, you saw me use the link data source to create queries um, without writing any code. Now we're going to customize the results with just a little bit of uh, custom C Sharp. So I've already got this, uh, my OR mapping file, and if you've already seen me create one of these in every video, so I won't show you how to do it. In this case, I did pull all of the database files in because honestly, it looks kind of cool when you hold down the control wheel and zoom in and out. So let's close that. Here's my default ASPX page with nothing in it. Let's make it interesting by bringing in a grid view. And I'll, oops, I should do that in design mode because here I'll use the little smart arrow button and I want to attach it to a data source, the link, uh, link data source that we talked about in the previous video. And I'll pretty much choose the default. Now, this happens to me all the time. This is empty. It turns out you have to compile the project first. So I just want to show you that. Let's try this again. Now, since I already have it attached to the link data source, I now have to configure it. Great, now we have it, and I'll choose the products table. I'll leave all the defaults there. Now we have kind of a lot here. Let me let me pull out the columns we're not using, just to make the query a little bit smaller for the screen. So I'll just remove like four. Let's see, how about one more? Okay, save that, and just to make sure it's working, I'll bring it up in a web browser. Very good. So we have about 77 rows. So what I'm going to do is modify this uh, link data source by hooking into an event that it throws. So I'll bring up the properties with Alt Enter, switch to the lightning bolt, and here we go, selecting. I'll double click on that, and I get to override, or I'm, I'm notified when I when the link data source is been, being asked to bind, in this case, to the grid view. So let's write a little bit of code. I'll create an instance of my Northwind data context as my DB. Okay, and let's see, I got a little bit of code here. Let me pull it over. I want to, what we'll do is constrain this query to only return the categories of products that are in beverages and seafood. I don't know, just, these are all made up. So we'll create um, some kind of category list. Cat list equals new string beverages and what was that? Seafood. Okay, and so let's create a brand new query equals from p and db products where the cat list contains contains anything that's in p category, the category name. So this is just one way you would expect that the query underneath the covers can do some kind of correlated subquery where the category name matches one of those two. And let's see, that's it, select p. Now, we'll take the result of that query and stick it in the result return value, or the argument that was passed in right here, this link data source select args, E. We'll set the E.result equal to our query and give it a shot. So I would expect to see fewer results. And sure enough, we have just a handful, category 1 and 8. Now, Behind the scenes, what's going on, I'll bring up the SQL query profiler, which I've been running here in the background. The last query we just executed is right here. So it's it's kind of hard to decode, but you can see our beverages and seafood. We're finding all the products, and then it's joined to the category table. There we go, categories, um, based on the, the, the two. Well, it is really hard to read, isn't it? <laughs> But you can see kind of what's going on here, okay? And so the point is to not really understand the exact SQL. It's just kind of remember what this looks like roughly, and I'll come back to it. So this is really cool. Watch. So we're not going to touch the query, the underlying query, nor are we going to touch the source code. But I'll go to the grid view and enable paging and sorting. That's it. Save it and run this again. So I'll sort by product name and go into page 2. So you can see it's working. We're on page two of this query. We're showing 10 rows. And if I go back to the trace view, look at the query that was executed right here at the bottom. It's a bit more complex. There's the seafood and beverages, but look at all this other stuff. Now what it's doing is um, 
the way we do paging in SQL, uh, SQL Server, there's this row number concept, and you can select over and do a combination of techniques here to, to do an efficient server-side paging. But what's, what's really nice about this is that you can see I, continue, I can continue to do um, uh, declarative-level programming by modifying my grid view. And essentially what, all we did here is say allow paging equals true. I just did it through the wizard. But the code behind the scenes still worked. Um, let me give you another example. Let's go in and let's try another query. Um, how about see, var q equals from p and products. Let's do, well, I'll, I'll keep that same contains query because that overall limits the number of uh, lines we're going get, to get back. Whoa, what happened? Ah. Uh, by the way, I am <laughs> to tell you I'm using something from this guy VI EMU. It's a visual. I'm sorry. It's a VI emulator, which I used to <laughs> have memorized pretty well. But you can see I'm still working with it. I like it because I can keep my hand on the keyboard and type without going over the mouse. Uh, let's see. Cat list contains everything from product name dot. Jeez, you think I'd have this one figured out since I just did it? Category. There we go. Product name. Oh, category name. Gee. There. Okay. Um, and then this is this is the key here. I'm going to create a new selection of uh, I need a space here. A new a new um, what do they call it? A projection. So I take the results and I'm only going to return a specific set of columns. In this case, I'll get the product name and how about the unit price? And we'll do a uh, calculation. So the number of orders. Order details, get the count, and we'll do the gross gross revenue equal to the order details, and then I'll stick in a um, a lambda function because we love these quantity times unit price. And this kind of query, I think I did almost the exact same thing in parts one or three of the video series. So if you want to know a little bit more what's going on, but what I want to show you is that when I run this. And I'm not expecting it to work. And the reason why, yeah, there we go. So I didn't expect it to work because, see this auto-generate columns is false. I need to change that to true. And the reason why is that we've created, really, a, a new set of columns that the grid view doesn't know about. When I drag the grid view on and bound it to my linked data source, it pre-populated these columns. Well, I don't need these columns anymore because I'm going to dynamically generate the mappings with this auto-generate columns. So let's see if that worked. No, not even close. What am I doing wrong here? I should have read this before. Product ID. Okay. Oh yeah, I need to return the product ID. Okay. My bad. Well, that's unfortunate because it would not have worked, but anyway, but I fixed it. Okay, here we go. So we're getting just these four, uh, these four new columns back, but two of them are calculated. It turns out I needed that product ID because that's the key. Um, and without that, as you can see, it's not going to be happy for this kind of query using the linked data source. But overall, you've seen that we've been able to uh, programmatically modify the linked data source without nothing more than um, writing just a tiny bit of code right here. So you can see this is a pretty powerful mechanism. What's really good about the whole architecture is the fact that even though back here in this code, it looks like when we do this, when we, when we create the query here and return it to result, the execution of this query is actually deferred until it's actually bound to the data grid. And that's what allows Link to do the extra add-ons of the paging and the sorting mechanism. So everything comes together in a deferred mechanism and allows this query at the very end to be generated right when it's actually needed. And that's your linked data source modified with code.